Hey everyone, Kevin Anderson here with Healthmark Industries. I wanted to do another quick tips for sterile processing video for you all. Uh, we are going to look at this question in this video. Are black specks showing up in your surgical trays? And maybe they have, maybe in the past, maybe they are now. But the biggest thing is, what are we going to do about it? We're going to get to some specific action steps you can take later on the video, so I hope you stick around to the end. Uh, but before we get started, I just want to remind you all to please subscribe and share the video. Click the notification bell so you're notified every time we put out a new video. All right, so let's get into it. So what exactly is the situation we're talking about? Um, it's not that one, sorry. Uh, it is the situation in the operating room where they call you and they're prepping for the next case and they're calling you because they opened up the trays and now they found debris in the trays. This has actually happened to me back when I was the sterile processing manager. I was called by the OR. They told me that there was bio burden in the trays and that they needed backup trays as, as soon as possible. That being said, when they said bio burden, in my mind, I'm thinking blood, tissue, bone, something like that. Um, I was not thinking about what I was actually going to see, which in this particular case, I was able to go up to the operating room and actually lay eyes on the situation. What was going on? What did they see in the tray? And um, I was surprised because what I found was black specks, black debris or flakes or whatever. To me, it did not look like or resemble blood, bone or tissue, which is what I thought I was going to see. So I was a little concerned at that point because I really wasn't sure what to do, where it was coming from or how to handle it, quite honestly. Uh, I do remember this situation coming up when I was a former uh, scrub nurse. All right. I would open up trays and I'd find these black flakes or sediment in the trays. And then we'd have to get new ones because we didn't really know what it was. Well, in those times, the, the managers of SPD, some of them even decided to remove the tray liners from the set so that we couldn't see the black specks anymore. Now, I just want to point out that <clears throat> that is not a real solution to the problem. That just masks the problem. It's not really fixing it and making it go away, which is what we want to do. So if you're ever tempted to blame the tray liner for an error that keeps coming up or a problem that keeps coming up, I would suggest that you try and figure out what the actual cause is and fix the cause rather than get rid of something that's helping people visualize a problem instead because that liner helps us in a lot of ways it helps us to be able to see the instruments in the set right we don't want to see stainless steel against a stainless steel basket because it all kind of blends together so that white liner helps us visualize the instruments it also will help protect the instruments from getting stuck in the openings of the tray and get bent and damaged and, and whatnot and it it also helps us with managing moisture in the sets so there's a lot of good purposes good reasons for tray liners and we don't want to take them out necessarily okay um so what are we going to do with this problem that's where we got to get into the solving of this problem because we already told you that taking away the tray liner is not going to solve this problem so what are we going to do well i recommend in this particular case and in other cases where you don't really know what to do reach out to your network you know that's part of the reason you build a network you start to build relationships with people you start asking them why and how they've dealt with similar problems or if they've ever seen this problem before and that's what I did. I had a trusted uh, partner. It was actually a sales rep that I had known who had been in the industry for a very long time. And I told him about the problem. He gave me a suggestion that, hey, you know, maybe it would be a good idea to do a steam sample and an analysis on it to make sure our steam quality was good. This was the 
steam sterilizer OEM. So, and I figured, hey, why not? It's not going to hurt and maybe we'll stumble across something. So we did end up doing that analysis of the steam sample and this is what we found. Lo and behold, there were black specks, flakes, all that stuff, sediment in the steam. So it wasn't, you know, us being crazy. It wasn't, uh, you know, my hunch was right that it wasn't blood or tissue or whatever. And the OR hadn't really seen it before, which kind of explains um, why they might have described it as bio burden. They weren't really sure what else to call it necessarily. So that's another subject for another video is coming up with terminology for things. But uh, the point is here is that we did find there was a problem with the steam and it was producing all this black sediment and then placing it into our trays. So big problem. So what did they do? They actually gave us some suggestions as well as to how we could fix the problem. They suggested that we install steam trap filters. This is something that we didn't have prior to this problem and prior to our steam analysis, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. We had no filters on our steam. So one thing about this is that it did actually clear up the problem. We stopped getting uh, complaints from the OR about the black sediment. Uh, but I do want to caution you if you do have this problem and you do have steam trap filters or you have to go through the process of installing them like I did, you can't stop there. You have to make sure that these filters are maintained. They will go bad over time. So your problem isn't 100% gone for the life of the sterilizer at this point. It still it will need preventive maintenance. So always be on the lookout uh, for this problem rearing its ugly head again. So like I said in the beginning, I wanted to give you some action steps. How are you going to fix this problem uh, if it came up in the future? Well, the first thing is to investigate. Remember I mentioned I actually got the opportunity to go to the OR when they complained about this problem happening. Well, that's what I recommend. As much as you possibly can, if there's a complaint in the operating room, physically go up there and visualize it as fast as you can because it will take them very little time a lot of times to take it all apart and get rid of it and uh, move on to trying to uh, restart the case, if you will. So that problem will be gone in no time. I guarantee you that. Uh, so as fast as you can, make it to the operating room and investigate the problem. Whether you're manager, supervisor, frontline tech, it doesn't matter. You just need to get eyes on what it is they're reporting. Don't rely on Band-Aid solutions. If you're tempted to remove a tray liner just so that people can't see the problem, then you're not solving the problem. You're just masking it and possibly leading to potential dangers for the patients, which of course we do not want that. Thirdly, reach out for help. Remember that network you're building, hopefully you're building a network. Uh, reach out to people who have been in the industry, who have tackled these similar problems, ask them questions, find out what they might have in terms of suggestions to help you along. This is how you're going to learn and how you're going to help solve real world problems. And lastly, follow up. So one of the things with this particular example is we did do another steam uh, sample and analysis after the filters were placed and we did find the steam quality to be uh, better at that point. But again, remember to always do that follow up to make sure whatever your intervention or your action steps were to solve the problem, make sure they actually solve the problem and it's not just uh, going to come up again, maybe on a weekend or in the middle of the night or something like that. We don't want to have that problem come up again. So that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you feel better equipped to deal with black specks in your trays. Uh, perhaps there might be other causes and other solutions for black specks, but this was the case in my experience. So I thought I'd share it with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.